Hello, everybody. This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. And I am here with Frankie Weber from Brazil. And we're going to be talking about Exadata. This is a, a part of the conversation series we're having for the Oracle Groundbreakers Yatra that is taking place um, right now, last week, and next week. So, uh, Frankie, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for the invitation. It's good to meet you. Uh, we're meeting here for the first Thanks. time. Yeah, we're meeting yep. here for the first time. I uh, I haven't actually gotten to Brazil yet. There's we've had many events there, um, Oracle events, but um, we have somebody there on my team. So or yeah, actually he's in that you know, region. So I haven't been able to get on a a plane um, and get to any events there. And then of course. We have our friendly neighborhood virus that actually actually came this year, so nobody's going yeah. anywhere. So um, good to it's meet hard. you online. Um, anyway, and you're participating in the Yatra here, um, and so I wanted to hook up and um, have a conversation. So before we start, you know, getting into your talk and your presentation a little bit, can you give me just a little bit of a background on you and what you do? Yep. So. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Frankie, as Jim mentioned, based in Brazil. Um, I work as an Oracle database consultant for Pythian uh, since December 2017. And I've been in the IT field and Oracle um, field since 2010. So it's been 10 years that uh, I'm working as a DBA. And uh, most of the time as a consultant for many different countries, uh, many different companies. And I supported many different companies in different countries. So now at Pythian, we support clients globally. And I also run some, some trainings on Exadata Matters on my own company, lordata.com.br. So if you're interested, uh, just take a look. And yeah, that's it. I'm 29 now. So I just had a boy. <laughs> so yeah, things are pretty intense here. Congratulations. Um, Thanks. It gets, so it's good to have children when you're young. It's much harder when you're <laughs> older, believe me. <laughs> I, I, I can't guess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay, so let's talk about Exadata. Um, Exadata Smart cool. Scan, um, live and un Censored. Is it uncensored? Is that what it's uncensored? Yeah. So yeah, it's um, uncensored. Yeah. Okay. So so what's what is the censored version of Exadata Life Scan? <laughs> no, the actual the actual meaning of this title is that I'm I'm speaking about Oracle Exadata, uh, Smart Scan, but it's actually a live demo and uncensored session. So you'll see everything that I'm going to to do and everything. Uh, it's gonna be it's going to be live on a Nexadata uh, like environment. So the idea is to show how smart scan works and the benefit that you can get out of it. And, you know, for people to understand and try to maybe um, replay these after just by seeing the recording or stuff like that. So that's the idea to go under the details of smart scan and, and reveal the benefits and see how it works, the architecture involved and everything like that. Cool. All right. Well, congratulations for doing it live. That's always uh, an extra challenge. Um, yeah. When we sometimes, you know, we're doing this, this conversation now just recorded, so it's easy. But many times we go to <laughs> conferences and we stream interviews live. And so this, this is... Uh, many more things to worry about when you're doing something live so uh, yeah so what exactly is smart scan yeah smart scan is uh, an exadata feature and exadata only it's not anywhere else so you will only get this feature on exadata and it's basically um, a feature that allows uh, users to query data no matter um, the volume, I would say, uh, so you get the, the the data faster than in anywhere else. So you query, let's say, you perform a full table scan in, in a table, or uh, index fast full scan in an index, and even if you don't have filters, you can get less data than the actual size of the segments. So let's say you have a one terabyte table, and 
uh, you were querying, um, I don't know, some average in some column and there is no index on that column. So Exadata Smart Scan can give you the result very quickly because there is some filtering happening in the background on the storage layer. So once uh, the data is uh, gathered on the storage layer, the storage server itself transferred to the database layer only the data that matters to the user. So it's basically some filtering on the filtering and processing on the storage server and uh, it offloads the database processing to the storage server. So you get more CPU available in the database because you are using that processing on the storage servers. So that's basically it. Okay, so you said that this is not this feature is not available elsewhere. Is is it a new feature? No, it's actually it actually exists since the beginning of Exadata. So since two thousand eight, when Exadata was introduced, this feature uh, became available, and this is I would say the secret sauce on the Exadata uh, database machine. So nowhere else wow. you can find anything like that. Oh, you... So that's a long time. That, that's a long time to have secret yep. sauce. Usually competitors <laughs> will sort of yeah, you know, come up with comparable they, features. I would say, yeah, I would say they try or there's something similar, but uh, nothing like that. So for, um, for Oracle database, there is nothing, uh, nothing elsewhere. And for other databases, I would say relational database, you don't have anything like that either. So you have some, some kind of, I would say related or similar concept on, um, on a Hadoop cluster where you have the, the data nodes, uh, the processing is, I would say the processing layer is different from the, I would say query layer or stuff like that. So there, it's not, uh, we cannot say it's the same or very similar, but it's a different concept. It's a different concept when you process data in different layers. So right. that, that's pretty what uh, Exadata does. Interesting. So if it's been around for a while, presumably DBAs know about it, right? Are you, are you trying to show some of the unique ways of using it or what's sort of new about your take on it? Oh, it's not new. It's just uh, sometimes people don't get uh, Exadata a lot or they don't get too frequent uh, the hands on it. So oh. the idea is to show uh, smart scan features, how they how they work um, to people that don't have Exadata house, in their business. Uh, so it's the idea is just to show that and also to show that if people want to get hands on it, there is a way of doing that for free. So you don't need to have an Exadata in your company or in your house or anything like that. So you can just access it um, available in the Oracle Cloud infrastructures. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to show how you can do that. Okay, cool, cool. And you, this talk is when? When are you going to be doing this? It's going to be on July 13th. I 13th. need to check okay. the schedule. I think it's early in the morning, India time. So okay. I'm not sure the exact time. I think it's seven thirty. I'm not sure what time the event starts, but I that's think okay. it's something like that. Yeah, cool. So thirteenth. So if you yeah, thirteenth. Yeah, I'll I'll put a link in the in the description cool. below. Um, okay, cool. So I notice um, your shirt. You got the Oracle Ace shirt on there. And, oh yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about the Oracle ACE program, how you got involved, what do you think? And yeah, so I would say that the Oracle ACE um, re, re, is, a re, is a reward. So it's not a certification, it's not anything like that. So you get it once uh, someone nominates you to the program to become an Oracle ACE. There, you, there are three levels, ACE Associate, ACE and ACE director. So I'm currently at the ACE in the mid, in the mid level. Uh, I started actually blogging back in 2014. So I started by my own blog. And then I started also writing some, some articles for the Oracle Technology Network at that time. 
So some of them were published in Portuguese in the Latin America community. And immediately in, I think, 2016, I started speaking at conferences. So all of that made me um, known here in the Brazilian community. And back in 2018, I started um, speaking at uh, conferences around the world. So I've been to Vancouver, Santiago in Chile, uh, Sofia in Bulgaria twice, Poland last year as well. And many times here in Brazil, in Sao Paulo and here in my city. So yeah, I, it, uh, I, I got to, to be known by the Oracle community. And then I got some nominations and back in November, 2017, I was uh, actually nominated and received the title from Oracle. Cool. Cool. So, so yeah, it, that's it, a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been, I've been, I've been talking to a, a fair number of aces. In fact, I would say more than half of the conversations I've been having so far are with Oracle aces. Uh, maybe even more actually um so it's just good it's just good to hear you know insights from um from how the program works and stuff i mean i know a little bit about it but i don't work i don't work you know, directly on it so mm -hmm. it's always nice to hear from people who are directly in it you know um yep. and it you know it's a community it's a recognition program but it's also a community because you guys interact with each other right you know when you go to events and things and right. You've done some speaking, you do, uh, and obviously you do, you know, blogging, and you have a community presence. Um, I was wondering if you can sort of talk about the sort of the value of working with various communities, whether it's you know like the Aces or or you know you go to a conference and you or you go to a user group or um, what's that you know what's the value of doing that. Yeah, I would say the first thing is that you learn more by sharing than for just keeping for yourself something that you, you, you know. So every time I'm going to write a blog post or speak at a conference, I have to study, I, I don't know, many times more than I would study for any other thing just to learn, you know. So I need to learn how to pass that knowledge to another person. So if they ask me any question about it, I need to, I, I try to be ready. I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I try to, to be ready and I study more. And I don't, I don't only go to the documentation and read the documentation. I, I normally do some labs to, to try to understand the product or the feature better. So you learn more because you kind of, have to dedicate yourself more to that subject that you are trying to explain to someone else. So I would say the most benefit you get is knowledge. And I would say on the same, on the same level of it, uh, of the knowledge is also the networking relationship that you grow. So I learned a lot of excellent professionals in many of those conferences that I never thought I would, I would met them in person or at least drink a beer with them or, you know, so it's, yeah, it's really, really amazing. People, you know, from Twitter, then you met them live in live, person. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So there is, there's, there's nothing that you can pay for that. So yeah, it's really cool. I, um, I used to be. I used to work at Sun Microsystems on the Open Solaris project, and I. Uh, nice. We um, had communities all over the world, user groups all over the world, and um, I got very friendly with some of the, of the uh, of the developers from Russia, and I never met them because I didn't have an opportunity to go there, and this is you know we opened Solaris in 2005. Okay, that's a long time ago, and yeah. um, the project closed down in 2010, right? So, um, and now we're in 2020. You know? um, just last year, I was at an event up in Tokyo. Um, it's a Java event, actually, and one of the guys from the Russian Open Solaris user group was there, you know, 
And I had only known him from Twitter and blogs and um, a couple of conference calls, things like that. And it was just like that. We just remembered everything we did, you know, and it was really, really great. Um, it is. And, and it, you know, we had such a great time talking about all the things that we used to do on that project, right? And um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I have hundreds of stories like that you meet people online initially usually uh, and then you meet them live uh, when you go into an event so mm -hmm. things have changed this year this is the year straight from hell <laughs> so I mean, yeah so, it's hard it's so what hard. what um how how are you managing you work primarily from home anyway right yeah i've been working for pecan since uh, late 2017 and uh, well at Pitian we normally work from home uh, so it I would say it's it's okay for me I'm very used to work from home I guess for other people that are not used to that it kind of gets some some kind of stressful so you have to balance that you need to know that there is working time there is personal time so sometimes working from home you don't stop working or you work more than from the office right so i would say that's the hard part and there is also the social distance right not only because of the covid but because you're not going to the office so you don't talk to people like you did uh in the past right. so that's the hard the hard part you need to be strong and keep your mental health health uh, your your mind healthy so yeah there are some some articles on the web on how to exercise that part so i try to practice yoga and meditate a little bit so that helps and also, i also play the guitar here you see yeah i can um, see that so that's also helped me to to alleviate the stress so yeah it looks like a strat is it a strat back there a what is, is, it, is that a stratocaster Oh, it's kind of a custom model of it. Yeah, okay. I, it was custom. It was built uh, by um, Luthier. So, um, yeah, it was kind of personalized. But, yes, it's a straddle-like model. Cool. So, um, yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I, um, you know, when I used to go to events, I'd come home with 20, 30 names that uh, people, new people I've met, you know. Um, and so this is a, a much more difficult situation in terms of the of the human relations, you know, part of it, which is a big part of how you build communities, you build you know software communities. You know, um, yeah. you you always have an online relationship with these people, but I think what people don't realize is that the physical in-person relationship is really just as important. Um, and that's not like you have to see each other all the time, but you know, once, twice a year, you know, there's a certain, you know, touch point. Um, it's the same thing when you have a distributed team, it's good to have an all hands once a year, you know, yeah. you, know a, you know, a few times a year. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, Frankie, good luck on your talk coming up in a couple of days. And, uh, I love the uncensored bit of it. So I hope it goes well. Yeah, and, it will. <laughs> and, I'm um, positive about it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. And uh, maybe uh, when the world gets back to normal or, as they say, the new normal, uh, maybe we'll see you at some event sometime in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Cool. Talk we'll to you soon. to that. Thanks. We'll see talk you. to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.